Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifillah The question was asked The question is regarding those who say that Allah cannot do everything They say Allah is unable to oppress and other things of the like It clearly states in the Quran that Allah is able to do anything He pleases Does this validate the Christian theology where God can come as a man because He is able to do everything? Where do we stop as Ahl Hadith? Also, can we say Allah cannot do such and such? Or do we say that it doesn't befit His Majesty? Uh, this is a series of complex questions. And as you mentioned, where do we stop as Ahl Hadith? Where did the, the Salaf stop? When we look at these types of questions, these are some of the types of questions that the people of philosophy and the people, uh, Ahl Kalam, and especially the most extreme from amongst them of the Mu'tazila and other early groups of the Jahamiya and so on and so forth. Those who either distorted the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they were the Mu'attala, they were the ones who said uh, that the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has no sifat so in essence from their theories from their intellect from their philosophical discourse they basically negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they negated his sifat so he so saying someone is ar-rahman or saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-rahman the most merciful having no mercy because you don't want to affirm this, the characteristic because you think the characteristic is like the creation, then you've negated that there is a Rahman. Okay? So basically, in essence, these are type of philosoph uh, philosophy questions. Ahl hadith deals with this, these kind of issues mostly in a very beautiful and clear way. They affirm what Allah says about himself and what the Prophet وسلم, says in the authentic sunnah about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about himself and what the Prophet وسلم, negates about himself. So some of the Salaf would deal directly with these kinds of arguments because these things came up from Ahl Bid'ah and they became so prevalent. So the Salaf uh, felt they needed uh, to respond. And this is when you find a lot of the early uh, Aqidah books that are written about al asma wa Sifat. Because the fitna in their time was related to the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then you have, so they were often uh, responding to Ahl, Ahl Bid'ah and... From the more contemporary, you know, much later than the Salaf, would be Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who went very deep in destroying the people of philosophy and Zandaka, destroying their arguments and the various groups of the Mu'attala. And he did it with excellent manners, he did it with excellent discourse, and he did it with Al uh, wa Bayan, with knowledge and evidences and clear proofs. Uh, destroying their arguments. So he knew their arguments, could go into their arguments and destroy their arguments and belittle and wipe out their arguments. But that was because of his, his uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him to be Shaykh al-Islam, you know, to be so, um, so profound in, in, in his knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just raised him up as a mujaddid, you know. So, Getting back to your question, because that's very important to give us a, a background, that you don't, for one, need to even get into those issues. People who, who doubt, and, and it's simple to say, as you mentioned, فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيد فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيد That he does what he wishes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he wishes. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And... Alongside with that, as you mentioned also in the last part uh, that you made as a question, but really is an answer, or do we say that it doesn't befit his majesty? We say that it doesn't befit his majesty. And that's how Ahl Hadith uh, just cuts it off. And a lot of the types of argumentation that people are coming up with and they're getting attacked through philosophy and they're getting attacked by disbelievers and stuff, it's better to cut that off, especially if you don't have ilm wa bayan wa hujjah. 
And a last faida, faida or, or, or important point I want to mention or benefit that I want to mention that is not often talked about is that Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was also criticized by many scholars of Ahl Hadith and Sunnah uh, with regards to uh, you know some some of his you know his contemporaries and and perhaps those uh, after him uh, like Imam Maqdisi and others they said hey, you know we love you know your Sheikh Al Islam we love the work you've done in dealing with Ahl Bid'ah but it is not befitting that you go into their books and exploit their arguments and and the way you're dealing so. You find that really, if we look, the the uh, the salaf cut those things off. But those who were exceptional in their knowledge and in their refutations could go into their the books of Ahl Bid'ah and deal with them, you know, sword to sword with knowledge. So that that's a lesson for us that not everyone should be going into depth into the arguments because it it can end up making you say something about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala which is uh, uh, untruth because you begin to want to win the debate or want to win the argument. So it's better to stick with very clear, learn what uh, uh, the aqidah of the salaf and just stick with that and make taslim with the nasus. It's not always going to be, you know, uh, nowadays because we're a society, we've been, uh, our, our societies around the world have been uh, influenced tremendously by uh, you know, rationalism and various movements of intellectual discourse. And in the West, especially, uh, the, uh, the sp specific time periods in which uh, rationalism became so, you know, in questioning religious beliefs and questioning everything became uh, exalted and, and we're, we still are, we're products of that, in fact, of our environment. So that you find many Muslims who are so affected, especially if they don't have the tariqah to salaf, then they also fall into these same types of arguments and some they just leave Islam because of this, you know, or they begin to search instead of making taslim bin nusus. And now you can really understand the tariqah to salaf and why they were saying taslim bin nusus. You know, stop where the Salaf stopped. Stop where the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. They, they just accepted because they had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then the Tabi'een. They just accepted. And, the, you know, they looked at the Nasus. Doesn't mean that they were intellectually inferior, no. But they realized that Aqidah is Tawqifiya. Aqidah or Creed is something that is, we only know it all these issues or these masail, issues of Tawheed, it isn't something you just sit in your room and then you just figured out. Oh, I just figured out that, uh, uh, you know, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, wa yastalzam hadha, and this and that and the other, and al-Asma'i wa Sifat, and the meanings for this. No, all of these meanings, although there's the, the, the intellect can come across some things, and recognize the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but mostly, or all of it is toqifiyya. All of it, it stops with the nas, meaning it's it's not debatable. And that we know and understand creed from studying the Quran and the Sunnah. We wouldn't know it otherwise. There's a much we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know that there's a... Uh, 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 that there were jinn existing or angels existing, except if it hadn't been revealed to us. Because we don't see them. We don't see that knowledge of ilm al ghaib And we believe it because it comes with the kitab wa sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem, alif la mim, or bada a'udhu billah min shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alif la mim, thalika al-kitab al ghaiba fi. Hudin lil-muttaqeen, alladhina yu'minun bil ghaib wa yuqimun salat wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun. Alif la mim, thalika al-kitab al ghaiba fi. This is a book in which there is no doubt. Hudan lil muttaqin. It's a guidance for the the pious ones, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes them. Aladina yu'minun bil ghaib. Those who believe in the unseen. How do you know the unseen? You know it from the Book of Allah, and you know it from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's it. You know, it's not going to be otherwise. All kind of other things will shape your belief in your aqidah. You know, it's it's the Book and the Sunnah. So. 
I hope that that gives us some insight into what you were asking. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.